A lot of people are talking about zonal pricing, but what is zonal electricity pricing? What does it mean for a customer? What does it mean for a business? What does it mean for energy generators? And what does it mean for energy companies? Well, there's a lot of huge moving parts when it comes to moving to our current electricity system to zonal pricing. This video, we're gonna be digging into all of that. But more importantly, why do companies like Octopus Energy and a couple of others want to actually get zonal pricing? Because some other energy companies are quite resistant. And why is that? Every time, governments look at reforming a system, the incumbents who don't like change because the existing system works very well for them, if not for consumers. Every time this happens, those incumbents threaten, uh, you know, this will damage investment. The reality is it's been done around the world has never damaged investment. So first we need to understand how the current system works. We're currently on a national average system. So what that means is we get the prices for the entire country and we take a national average to then do your standard tariff. So your standard tariff, Octopus Go and tar tariff, whichever tariff you're on, you'll be on within a few pence no matter where you are in the country. Now the problem this has is because the way electricity prices are set, they're set on whatever the most expensive generation is on that given day, and that's split through the entire nation nationally. So at the moment, the most expensive form of any generation is gas. Even if you're with a renewable company like Octopus Energy, you will still pay the highest wholesale price for that day. And that's what counts into your average over the year or over your tariff. Uh, there's the wholesale costs and there's the system costs. Uh, our wholesale costs have been pushed sky high because of our dependence on the global gas market, uh, which has been you know, uh, an incredible levels for the last few years. And that's pushed wholesale prices high. And our system costs have been pushed high and continue to get higher because of the outdated market arrangements. Uh, introducing zonal pricing helps address both. Now, one thing to remember is we are actually paying to turn off some generation. And when I say paying to turn off, I mean they could be generating plenty of power and we actually have to pay them to turn off because they can generate power. They're being told by the national grid not to generate any power. And that's because our system is built around coal and fossil fuels and the grid and the pricing structure basically means that we have to turn off these generations because they're not usually in the right place. So turbines are, are usually in less densely populated areas and to get them to the more populated areas, we just turn on the, 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 the coal plants or whatever's closer by. Now there is better ways of moving around that energy and using that energy but under the current pricing system, it's just not possible. We have to actually pay the turbine to turn off. Now you would think that what we do instead is store that power into maybe huge storage battery sites. Cables that connect the UK to other countries flow the wrong way. We have batteries that are charging when they should be discharging. And so much of the time now they're working against the system instead of for it, because none of them are getting the right signals about what to do when. All these back-end operational uh, details uh, are hugely improved by uh, zonal pricing. Now, zonal pricing could really change the dynamics of this country because typically wind farms, solar parks, and other green generation tends to be put in areas where we have less good grid connections. So, you know, fields that can't be used for farming usually have solar parks and very windy areas tend to be more remotely populated. But what this could actually mean is a restructuring of the country because what we could see in these more deprived areas which get some, sometimes get wind turbines is more factories and businesses wanting to go to these areas because the zonal pricing could mean they get cheaper electricity because they built a power plant, net, they built a power plant as in wind turbine plant right next to where the factory is. Now the factory being near this basically means that they benefit from cheaper forms of electricity. Now the other way we can get rid of this cheap form of electricity rather than paying to turn it off is saying to you as a customer or you as a local business, if you want to use this power today on this really windy day, we will give you a discount on that power. That can't happen under the current system. It can only happen under zonal pricing. So at the moment, these windy areas could be using this power at a cheaper rate, but instead we're paying gas turbines to turn off, uh, turn on and wind turbines to be turned off instead of just redistributing that power to areas that may use it if it was highly discounted. We could also see new business models set up for small, medium businesses that are nothing to do with power, but have 
vast amounts of areas that they could put storage batteries in their business, charging up those batteries on very, very windy days and either running their business off that green power throughout the entire week or selling it back to the grid when the grid needs that power when it's not a windy day. You'll still have regional variations, but with 3.7 billion pounds of savings, there's room for everybody to save money, especially those who live in the areas where we generate the most clean energy. Now, short term, some resellers and some generators will suffer from zonal pricing because they're on really old term thinking on the way they are and the way they're going to have to adapt their business. But zonal pricing should, in the long run, benefit not only businesses, not only consumers, but also generators, because there is very, very, very decent returns for everybody here. Now, it's gonna save the grid a fortune of money because we're not gonna be paying to turn turbines off, and it's also gonna mean that we can redistribute that power more effectively in the country, but it should mean that everybody sees a discount on their bills, not just the people near wind turbines, because everybody's paying to turn the wind turbines off when they could be generating power. So redistributing the way that power is used could mean that, well, will mean that everybody should see a small reduction on their bill because the, t the, the grids, the, the power stations, the turbines, they're not being used in a manner that's effective. We're using the system very, very inefficiently, which is actually dampening and ruining investment in green technology in the UK, in all sorts of form of generation over here, because it's just not the way most other countries are doing business. There's other countries doing zonal pricing and they've all seen a benefit in investment when going to that system. It could also mean more turbines, more uh, solar plants being built because if they've got local resistance at the moment to local planning, you know, to local residents, but suddenly they're allowed to benefit from that power investment there. So turbine being built, guess what? If it's really windy, and the rest of the UK don't need the power, we're going to give you a huge discount of power in that area. You'll suddenly see local residents, no, local NIMBYs, suddenly changing their mind about building a turbine locally to them. Because at the end of the day, it's in their local community. Shouldn't they benefit from it as well? In fact, one of the most expensive places in the country for electricity is usually the places that generate the most power. Liverpool, Scotland, for example, have got turbines and renewable energy right near them. They say pay some of the highest prices in the country for electricity and standing charge. Is that fair? I don't think so. Now, if you want to help support zonal pricing, I'm going to put some links on the description and down below in the comments where you can sign some petitions. There's two petitions. There's one I'm going to start on a government petition to try and get it uh, basically a debate in Parliament about zonal pricing. And then there's another one through a basically a conglomerate which have got so many signatures on it so far. Hopefully, if you could all sign both of them, this would be really, really helpful. But basically, we just need to put some pressure on everyone who's trying to stop this. Now, there is energy companies and there is people at the moment who do not want zonal pricing. We shouldn't let them win because this should mean a discount for all of us. All small businesses, all large businesses, all medium businesses, everyone is going to see a discount on the bills, even if they don't live near wind turbines. Because like I said, you're going to get that saving of not turning these off and it just distributes power way more effectively than it is. Don't let the old energy companies win. Help support, you know, proactive companies. And Octopus is not the only energy company that is supporting zonal pricing. There is others. It's just that, you know, Octopus Energy are very vocal about it. Greg Jackson is very vocal about it, as you've seen from the clips I've used in this video. If you want to learn more about Octopus Energy, go to evnick.com forward slash energy, where I've got some links to their tariffs and also codes so you can get a £50 sign-up bonus if you want to sign up to them. And if you really want to reduce your bills, one way of doing that is getting battery storage or solar panels.